Hey y'all, I'm Paige Feldman. I'm a filmmaker and I'm documenting my journey towards making my first feature as a writer and director here on this YouTube channel. Now, what I should be doing right now is working on the revision for my contained romantic comedy feature, but it can be really hard to get to the page. I don't know if you feel the same way, but sometimes, and especially with this project, I feel so much pressure to get everything right that even opening the binder where I have my script sitting in it or opening my computer to look at the script, it just is so daunting because I have so much writing on this project. It's my debut feature as a writer-director and I want to make sure that it represents me to my best because this is going to be the thing that really acts as a calling card as I continue to work my way through the industry and hopefully make this, being a filmmaker, a full-time job. Now what I'm dealing with is something that can really be encapsulated by Ira Glass's concept of the gap, which is sort of the quality gap between the idealized thing in your head that you want your project to be versus what it actually is on paper. And in this second revision that I'm doing on this script, I'm just real in the muck there because I still have, you know, 40 pages that I want to cut and I don't feel like I have a super solid understanding of the structure of this story. I have an idea of what it should be, but it's the work and getting there that's really bumping me right now. And one thing that I do to get myself to the page when I need to do it, when I'm feeling like this, is listen to music. And so I love creating playlists for my various projects. In fact, it's something that I do when I start to really fall in love with an idea and outlining it and really fleshing it out. I'll listen to songs just on shuffle on Spotify, on suggested lists, on other playlists, on the radio. I'm loving listening to KCRW, the uh, NPR network in Los Angeles right now, and shazamming songs as I'm driving. Very safely at stoplights, I'll have the shazam up on my phone and I'll hit the button when I can. Don't worry, I'm like actually, you know, watching the road. I've never had an accident, I'm a good driver. <laughs> But anyway, I will look for, or look for, listen for songs that have the right vibe, the thing that I'm going for in my script, and I will add them to a playlist. And when I need to sit down and get writing, I will listen to that playlist. I'll do it while I'm making myself a coffee or a tea. I will do it in the shower if I've just come back from a workout, like on a weekend morning and I'm ready to roll into my writing. or if I'm cooking and I just need to like crack that one thing, I'll have the playlist on and get myself into the right mood because so much about filmmaking and telling stories is about finding a solution that fits the type of story that I want to tell, the type of story that you want to tell. So I want to share this playlist with you today, not only because I love it and I'm proud of the vibe that I've cultivated with it and the story that I'm telling based on these emotions and feelings and themes that I've gotten in this playlist, but more importantly, because when I started this journey on YouTube of documenting my process of making this film, I promised I would be completely real, completely open, and tell you when I'm struggling. And right now, I'm struggling, and this playlist is something that is really pushing me through and helping me to get to work and do the work I need to to fill that gap in terms of what the story is right now and the like beautiful idealized thing that I want it to be. So obviously we're gonna go to our old friend screen share. So I want to share this playlist with you in particular because I want to show you briefly how I constructed it. It's very unscientific. These songs are not in any order beyond the order that I heard them and felt like they connected to the idea that I was starting to formulate. So Sub Radio's What You Wanna Hear was the first song I heard that connected to the idea of this contained romantic comedy, these two people stuck in a house together having to work out their differences. That was the initial genesis of the idea. And Moments in the Mountains was second. Now, if you want to, when you're constructing your own playlist, or if it really helps you, you could put them in some order, whether it's number one is the song that is the most like quintessential this is the film, or number one is the song that would open the film if this was a like chronological telling of the story in song form. For me though, the most important thing is my process of discovery of tone here, because tone is what I'm going for when I listen to these songs. I'm looking for a song that makes me feel the way that I want the audience to feel when they are watching the finished film. So Sub Radio's What You Want to Hear is kind of like this, this boppy and a little bit like song that you want to sing in the car when you're feeling a little bit angsty. And it's also a bop. 
overpass graffiti is a little bit wistful. There's an evolution here. So we have boppy and a little bit like angsty, like in your feelings, going to emotional and emotive and wistful. And then rock steady is like that bop still, but it's vintage. And then we get damn, I wish I was your lover. Vintage feeling, but also that angst and that emotion and that longing. And I think this, and, and this is the thing that I love about this process, because I'll hear one song and then I'll hear another song and another song and they'll all kind of remind me of certain aspects of the other songs and they all coalesce into a, a unique vibe that I want this film to give. So Watermelon Sugar is that like longing, but a little bit more self-assured. Closer is one of my favorite songs ever and it's like about the anticipation of a first kiss. There's something very teenage in like a great way because I think teenagers are fascinating and amazing people. This isn't a story about teenagers, but the main characters were like close when they were teenagers, they lost their virginity to each other and it's a whole thing. And so there's some of that leftover emotion within their relationship. And as I'm just like continuing on, like Kiss the Rain by Billy Myers, this is one of those quintessential songs from when I was like in junior high or elementary school, where it's just someone screaming out their feelings in the rain. It's like emo, but more dramatic somehow. As I keep going, like run away with me, Domino, which makes me think of like people running around outside in the night, just being fully into their feelings and expressive. As I kept going, I finally hit on uh, song 28, Wonderwall. This, it took 28 songs for me to find my like theme song for this film. And Wonderwall is perfect because my main character is a songwriter and I was getting more and more into singer songwriter sort of songs and female artists. And like if Wonderwall, if there was a cover, a great cover of Wonderwall by a woman on a guitar, please send it to me because that's what I want. We have Carly Rae Jepsen and Taylor Swift a few times in this playlist for like the female singer songwriter -y vibes that I want. But Wonderwall is perfect because it is a sing-along song that you sing around the campfire. It has that sort of 90s vintage vibe. You're just wailing on the guitar, singing around a campfire, singing around outside with your friends. This, this is the song that I'm anchoring this whole film to, just in terms of a vibe, in terms of a tone. I'm gonna scroll through here, but everything else, like we have All I Want by Toad the Wet Sprocket, which has a similar sort of longing and is the 90s thing. Ants Marching, Dave Matthews Band, like this figuring out Wonderwall was like the gateway to all of these other songs on this playlist. And I have right now 47 songs in the playlist and this is my lodestar. This is what I turn to when I'm not 100% sure I know what to do next for, a, for the script. I don't know how to get myself in the chair. I start listening to this and I remember, I know this story. I know the story so well that I was able to cultivate a list of 47 songs that encapsulate various aspects of the vibe of this story, of the tone of this story. That alone gives me confidence, but also I love all of these songs, so I just get to listen to some dope music and put myself in my character's shoes, get into the world that I'm creating, so that when I am ready to open the, the notebook, and I get real anxious to do it when I'm listening to this because I start thinking of all of the scenes that these songs could be attached to, I just get excited to write. And that's the purpose of the playlist, is to get me excited to write, to feel the vibe, and also to like share the vibe with other people because I'm all about sharing this journey and being super honest about it. So. I am going to put the link in the description below to this playlist so you can see it. And also I have another surprise for you because it's called currently the Untitled Contained Romantic Comedy Playlist, but that's not right. That is such a long mouthy title and you know, this film with a playlist of 47 songs, I should be able to come up with a title for this script. And I, I don't love this title, but it's a title. I have a title for this film, finally, something I can use to work on. It's called Back To You. So that's the name of the playlist. That's the name of the film. So that's my playlist for this, I guess it's this untitled, for the last time, this untitled contained romantic comedy feature, except now it's called Back To You. This is my playlist for Back To You, my contained romantic comedy feature. 
If you have a playlist on a project that you're working on, please drop it in the comments. I would love to listen to it and follow it on Spotify and see what music inspires you. If you don't have a playlist, but you like this video, just hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Or if you don't feel like doing that, I really appreciate you making it all the way to this part of the video and joining me on this journey to make my debut feature as a writer director. All of your support in whatever form means so much because it's tough being an indie filmmaker and wondering who cares and if you're screaming out into the void. And I know thanks to your views, your likes, your comments, the subscribes, that I'm not really. We have a small group, but we're mighty, and I'm so thankful to have you on this journey with me. Come back next week, because I'll be sharing more about this journey, about making my debut feature as a writer-director, here on Cake Fight Presents The Making Of. Hi, thank you for watching.